put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 in 3D. This picks up exactly where Part 1 left off with both plot, which I'm not going to give away, and the realization that this really could have been one three-hour movie. The, there is, of course, the argument that it is the most complex of the books, and it makes sense to split it up. It, you know, a, a lot happens. There's a lot of characters, a lot of plot, a lot of new elements. Still, it, it could have been... Yeah, thankfully, thankfully we are not quite dealing with a The Hobbit Part 3 where we literally just have an action scene and it easily could have been. There, there was no reason for that to be more than two movies. Yeah, I and I will say the cutoff point, which I'm not sure I was entirely fond of when I recorded the videos for part one. The cutoff point for part one, right down to the images that it ends on, were very well selected. I realized that, excuse me, as I proceeded through the second half of the Mockingjay book with, yeah, the, the closing images and words really working well as setup for the yeah for for this one and for the finale now Katniss as a symbol for the rebels joins squad 451 i i really like that Suzanne Collins called it that you know it reminds me of that book and I lost it in a fire, and then I got the movie, which is really ironic. I'm getting off topic. Of, of all the books, to see a film version. Yeah. The, yes. The squad is going to the capital. And they will have to maneuver the sadistic traps made by the game makers, made for Hunger Games. And once they get to President Snow's mansion, they will assassinate him. Now, where the capital has, right from the, the start, looked garish and threatening, you know, now we have these, you know, an actual siege and a lot of capital citizens displaced and such and it really works it feels like it's there's a line I'm not gonna give away exactly where it's from but it's quite good about you know someone suggesting to snow how would you like it if we set your backyard on fire this is that. This is President Snow's backyard on fire. And yeah, it, it really works. It doesn't feel like it's just bigger than the districts. This is the, you know, before now, we've only seen trouble in the districts. We've never seen trouble in the capital. And it really is. Yeah, it's it's devastating to just you know you you can really tell this is this is not going to be easy no matter how well the the military does at this there is no way that we're coming out of this without a lot of hard work a lot of rebuilding now 
And one reviewer says one hour of excitement and another hour of mush. And it's how I, uh, an entire hour of mush, really? Yeah, to, to be fair, it is slightly uneven. And I, I knew that it would be when, yeah, once I was done with the book, I was like, are they really going to make this work? But yeah, it's dark. It's, you know, it hits hard. It's, it hits heavy. It's fiercely political. This is a movie that really wants to, yeah, you know, to, to inspire the viewer the way Katniss inspires the, the districts, you know. And it's, I mean, it's, it's impressively well-timed considering that it's completely accidental. Because they've, you know, they've been making one of these every year, releasing one every year, rather. This in part one, filmed back to back. So, yeah, it's, but it's, it's right there, it's on the page of the book, you know, just listen through the audiobook. So, you know, it wasn't made up for, there are maybe a few details that, you know, make it clear that this was... This was produced very recently, and considering current situations as far as war and rebellions and such go. Now, somewhat like, you know, Catching Fire and Part 1, Mockingjay Part 1, both start with Katniss kind of soothing herself, working to, you know, try to find something that she can, yeah, calming herself down some. And in this, it, it starts with her in a relatively calm situation, at least. And the... The... The revolution is really taking hold and can proceed to, to spread and really change the world, you know, like other revolutions before. The French, the Russian, dance, dance. I listened through the audiobook for each of these adaptations. I've listened through the audiobook of that. Yeah. Of, of the particular book that they were adapting. Now, with part one, I stopped roughly halfway. I, I tried to find a place that made sense. I overshot the mark slightly, but yeah, for where they would cut off part one, and so I had only listened through part two, you know, just, I don't know, a week ago, I guess, more or less. So, yeah, and uh, I have to, I mean, obviously it's not quite the same as reading, but I prefer audiobooks. But, yeah, they're really, really great books. I don't know, I, I know a lot of people really hate this one, and I, I'm not going to be one of those people who says, ah, oh, it's just because, like, no, nah, there, there are things about this one that you could say are... Not quite as, but it's at the very least great. I don't know if I quite love it the way I love the first two, but yeah, fantastically well written. You know, if you're gonna go for audio, but I, I definitely recommend the Scholastic. You know, read by Carolyn McCormick, just does great. Yeah. Now the. Last minute notes. The movie, not counting the end credits, is only two hours and eight minutes. So, again, anyone saying, oh, it's more than two and a half hours and it's like so long. No, it really, I, I, yeah. I've ranted enough about that in other videos repeatedly. I watched this in 3D. 
I, I've heard that it's not going to be released in 3D in the US. You're not really missing much. You know, normally this is the part where I, you know, do a happy jig and be like, you know, uh, this is, you know, this is when it pays off to be European. You know, when when we get like Marvel movies a week ahead. Now this this one, this one they could have kept to themselves. Basically, there there are I count one where they like launch something right at the viewer. You know, and there were like, you know, there were times where like a, a big explosion might happen and like some dust would go you know, yeah, to, toward the, you know, be, go beyond the, the screen, and there were things here and there that were, that had depth, but it's very clear that it is this kind of just, well, 3D is supposed to make, like, money, and it's, I would guess it's a post-conversion. The thing is that this movie... There are big holograms in this. In Prometheus, you know, say what you will about Ridley Scott, and I have quite a few words. He does visuals really well, and that movie really gets how to how you can make good use of 3D for a hologram like that. There are several holograms, you know, I mean they don't spend forever looking at holograms in this. But there are a number of scenes where they bring up a hologram, and at no point does it really feel like you could just, you know, I mean, it's this, it's, it's one of the best ways to really do the, the kind of 3D, because it really, there's, there's so much room to play with there, and it doesn't, it's the kind of thing where it's okay if you're not like it's it's not one of those things where it's like super obvious okay I was supposed to watch this in 3D if you don't and it's also just not it's not gonna really like take you out of the movie the way some really showy 3D does so yeah it's just it's really clear they didn't really yeah they weren't that interested in that aspect here we do get to see Boggs be a badass Caesar Flickerman is not in this much. When he is, he has to severely downplay the the whole act, and it's just it's just boring. And it's like, why even make that Caesar? Why not just have some other person do? I mean, even even in the in part one, he maybe wasn't as there were, the the some of the stuff there with him was less bombastic than the stuff in the first two but excuse me he still it really meant it really mattered that it was him and there's still and and here it just it feels like well i mean he's We've got a great actor, and we still have some really cool makeup and costume designs. Let's let's put him in there, even though it really doesn't. Yeah. And something this does do well is that the basically Katniss, Gale, and Peeta each have these really extremely emotional scenes you know they 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 go through a lot of really extreme situations together and yeah this one really lets that there's yeah they, they have some immensely dramatic stuff here and yeah, I think I'll expand upon that later. Now, this is, of course, still about these... Not so much depicted, but these 
ancient Roman gladiatorial games where the, you know, the, the many poor fight, you know, for the amusement of the rich and in a hope to join the rich and the rich have had too much plastic surgery done and look really grotesque to us and you know it's a satire on reality TV cult of distraction and this kind of Orwellian totalitarian dystopian society I had thought that this might be going for the same two halves thing of um, first we see them train for the um, main event and then we see them actually go and that you know as you know yeah that that occurred to me as I was listening through it and it you know it also helped explain to me why they split it up because there isn't really yeah in part one it's not really a training kind of situation so but no the again the, these are really very accurate adaptations in a lot of ways but of course what in the book can take you know a lot of time here just kind of happens right away and things that yeah things that take a lot of time are sped up you know parts cut out and such instead it really you know from very early on we have the you know our characters fighting and something I, I do quite like is that they did include this discussion of what to do about District 2's it's basically like there there are a lot of guns in this one place and it's like it's kind of sort of like a mine and it's really difficult to conquer you know you can send in a lot of you know a lot of units and not get it and yeah they they discuss how to best deal with this and it's yeah, it's a great scene in the book, great scene in the movie. The the love triangle, of course, has to be resolved. And yeah, I I haven't really picked, I I'm not against love triangles in theory. In reality, I'm not I don't really know of a lot that I think really work or really that interesting. It's yeah, it's it's kind of played out and just yeah, but yeah, I haven't really paid attention to like you know how people have been pairing them up. So I'm gonna go with my own. I, I you know whether you're Team Gatness Kale or Hakuna Petita slash. Capetnia? Yeah, the the twilighty love triangle with the cringe inducing passive aggressive gestures that we're supposed to care about, but don't really is, you know, finally resolved here. And you know, I I think I've already pointed out in some of the other videos, but yeah, they're just they're not necessarily distinct enough, you know, you have the this sensitive, really, you know, overflowing with empathy, stalking since, like, forever, hadn't, you know, pretty much hadn't said a word to her, versus the, the older, more masculine, platonic hunting partner that she's known and trusted for years. It's just, they're both selfless, they're both you know, fiercely devoted to Katniss. Yeah, they're just not that 
distinct and that you know doesn't feel like enough of a choice and they're not a, really interesting enough each uh, by themselves either this one does have both Gale and Peta in the same place for a long time where yeah I shouldn't say exactly why but that it is basically the first time that has really happened and yeah there is of course something yeah that that makes it more distinctly you know they're they're both right there it's not it's no longer a matter of convenience at all and there is some chickens coming home to roost and you know someone might you know be frustrated that she hasn't made her choice yet and someone might feel used friend zoned and you know the the kisses may be questioned for how genuine or meaningful they were and she does still have the pearl the you know like the others this has themes of survival government control rebellion independence versus interdependence and you know I already mentioned satire you know this very amped up version of real life class struggles and we are again thankfully spared the too tight too shaky cam you know in the action and in general and the the districts are mainly background and this one we've we saw them in part one and we've seen them in the other some this one doesn't particularly go into I mean the they're almost ready to go straight to the capital at the start of this movie and the the cinema snobs friends you know Sarah Sarah Lewis from there said that you know part one would be really boring and part two would be really depressing yeah that's that's more or less true and you know also called Mockingjay PTSD the book and yeah that is very true and she did also assure that you know part two here wouldn't be just one long climax one long action scene and that is also true it it has a lot of action especially for the first maybe first half or so and certainly a lot of yeah it's it's big it's very big action but there are you know stops along the way there are resting periods and such it's not non-stop and the Francis Lawrence who directed Catching Fire and both parts of Mockingjay said that the book was very much a book of two halves making it very easy to split and that does make a lot of sense it is really again I would still say you know I think it would be I, I don't know if the studios are gonna do this but if maybe someone could I don't know if it's legal to look let's say I, I don't know if it's legal to actually do and like you know you're putting it out probably not be legal I think it would be 
I, th I think it would be nice if people who really know the, the books and these movies and really spend a lot of time with them would like maybe just write, you know, yeah, write, write how they would edit the two into just one movie and that would, yes. Nevertheless, there are some things going on here that make sense to separate from the first one. And... Uh, where the yeah the the first one was somewhat weak the, the weakest of the the films up to that point and it it really did not have enough plot and then you know they also had to increase the action for that kind of but yeah with this one there's There's a lot of action, not necessarily a ton of plot. Like, there are ideas and such, and little hints and, and things, but, like, not a lot of, like, characters. You know, like, there are these little bits where then there's going to be some exposition, then something happens, exposition, but there's not a lot of just, like, this happens, then this happens, then that happens. But the, the action, they, they fit most of what's in the book in. And it's... Um, I worry that it might feel excessive. It really doesn't... It doesn't... None of the scenes go on for too long by themselves. None of the... And, and each... Each of these scenes can easily, you know, they are sufficiently inspired and interesting that we want to see. It's, it's, you know, I will say that, you know, after a little while you realize, oh, so this is kind of how the movie's going to be for the next little bit. And then, yeah. And that is a little unfortunate, but... Yeah, it really does have a... None of the, the scenes, they're, they're all so, so well done that you want to see them and that you, you know, it doesn't feel like anything should have been cut or just combined or the like. And... Um, where the first one was definitely in need of a trim. To an extent, this one could do with some of that, but it's not too... Yeah, there's, there's one aspect, but I'll get to that later on. Now, this does still have some really convenient writing. It probably does have the least of these. I think the moment that you take it out of the Hunger Games arena, the the convenient writing is less... yeah. Although the, the film does have some really convenient writing that the book doesn't. Yeah. And yeah, as you know, as was the case with the first three you know, what is in the book, inferred, or, you know, it's maybe inner monologue, it's just exposition, here becomes actual lines, visuals, or altogether is cut, you know, to an extent it's still the, the first person perspective from Cadmus in the films, but you do also have some third-person perspective. So basically, everything relates to Cadmus. It isn't all like something that she actually directly sees or such. But excuse me, there's nothing that doesn't at all affect her in some way. The, the pacing is a little uneven. It does... 
you can tell that some of these things were originally written for a book and it's it's very eager to include everything in the book that it can and certainly everything that really means something that yeah and yeah there there are some things that are then left in where just yeah the the first maybe half hour of the film really yeah you you feel like it wouldn't have been absolutely terrible if the film had started you know about half an hour into and just yeah i'm i'm not saying that it should have i i really like these early scenes but yeah and that's also because i really like the book if i hadn't read the book i would probably have said yeah this should maybe have been. they they work they add they they yeah you can you can still tell and the the mockingjay symbol is still not explained i i rewatched them on dvd the the first 3 and on the catching fire dvd as a deleted scene there is actually a quite good explanation of the symbolism and yeah it's really too bad that they didn't but yeah you know it's there's a deleted scene so people can actually see it you know if they just if if they're not going to read the books i i recommend you do but you know not going to tie anyone down force them to read again and you know there's of course also a, it's probably on wikia now the ending the ending of the book is very much this kind of you're not really sure if things are necessarily going to turn out just you know the very best they could but here they they do opt for a somewhat more positive one and I quite like it I the the a lot of the most brutal stuff in the book yeah is either just gone or distinctly toned down but it's still a very brutal film and yeah I, th I think ultimately just for a movie for a movie that you know these have been about you know th these have been very exciting and you know there there's humor there is some light along the way you know we're not supposed to be cheering as we're watching these teenagers try to kill each other since that would make us as bad as the capital but we are supposed to you know we we are getting into the characters and we are hoping that everything works out and for that I'm still not sure how I feel about the overall ending, but I do, I don't strongly dislike it. I, I think I'm, I'm basically okay with it. And I, you know, it had to end in one way or another, and there are definitely worse ways it could have gone. But with a film, you really have to have some kind of just, yeah, it, uh, and and I think they did quite well at that, and also without losing the the emotional punch of the most of the emotional punch of the the book. Now, Katniss is still you know somewhat guarded, and you know this excellent hunter and. At first, not really by choice, but now she has somewhat embraced it. She is the symbol of the rebellion. And PETA has 
since he's been tortured, he's suffering from PTSD and yeah, you know, they, they, they got him, you know, the, the district 13 has him, but it's, it's still, you know, I, like, like he said early on, you know, he didn't want to, the, the capital turning him into something he's not, and that is kind of what happened to him, so, you know, the, something, yeah, one, one of the worst things that could happen to, to, to anyone, and, you know, to, to help him, you know, get, get, get more of a grip on reality again, they play never have or ever, I mean, real or not real, with him, and it, yeah, it, it quite works, and, you know, trying, of course, to get him back to this charming, funny, winning personality, you know, he, he used to always know the right thing to say, and then we, of course, have Gail, Katniss's best friend from District 12, also a great hunter, but also very much a soldier for District 13, a fighter, and yeah, someone who hates the capital, and yeah, very much, very much willing to kill people working for the capital, and that also, the, the, Gale doesn't get a lot to do in the first two books, and even less in the movies, because at least in the books there is, you know, the, the, yeah, they, they have room for more, but here in the third one, he really gets to show how different he is from Peter, and yeah, it, he's very clearly defined, both here and in part one. And the... Effie Trinket is still here. She doesn't have a lot to do. I, They did have a little bit in part one, and yeah, here just... There, there isn't really that much, and you know, Hamish. Excuse me. Also, excuse me. Also, still a great character. Excuse me. Doesn't have an awful lot to do either. And Plutarch, of course. Yeah, you know, the, the very last of his performance, he had filmed almost all of it, Philip Seymour Hoffman had before he died, and yeah, it's, it's still a fantastic performance, and yeah, he, he had more really good stuff in part one, but there is still a little bit of good stuff for him in this, and you know, by which I mean, you know, stuff that he had actually, stuff that had been written, every moment of his performance in, you know, all three of these is phenomenal. And, you know, we have Coin, the, you know, this, this compelling, strong female character, very much a leader, you know, president of District 13. And of course, President Snow, who truly hates Katniss, and she truly hates him back. And in this one, he isn't going along with really questionable advice for a really long time. We of course still have Cresta, the District 13, you know, director of propaganda movies, Propos, and Finnick, who for the first time in a long time, is really happy, and uh, yeah, you, if you've watched the movies leading up to this one, you know why, and yeah, 
he also doesn't have that much. Yeah, but he had a lot of great stuff in Catching Fire, at least. Antonius, played by Robert Knepper, teabag from Prison Break, where he was basically the, the Smeagol. He was, you know, this. Yeah, he was really in a really, really bad place, and he'd done some really awful things, but maybe he could be redeemed. You know, best part about that, best part of that whole show, he didn't have a lot to do in part one, so I figured that he was going to be really compelling here. I wasn't prepared for my disappointment. I really don't think that they should have particularly made... I see what they did. I do. I don't think it was necessary. And I really don't think that the... Yeah. If you... Yeah. Now, of course, Joanna Mason, Gina, as played by Gina Malone, is back, and yeah, the the you know this is the first time we see her outside of the arena, kind of yeah, and she you know still very much has this frenemies relationship with Katniss, where you know they are just as eager to exchange barbs as to actually help the other. And she's one of my favorite characters. And yeah, she's she's fantastic in this. There's like, you know, there, there are a few shots where she's like one of a number of characters. And even when she was just one, it's like, I can't quite pin out Joanna's on screen. I can I can tell. I can sense that Gina Malone's just you know the the attitude and the the presence is yeah. I will say that they did remove one thing that I think is absolutely criminal. That was fantastic in the book. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to give away, I'll, I'll go into it in the thoughts video, but yeah. Nevertheless, uh, yeah, she's a lot of fun, and the... She might be one of the... Yeah, she's probably the one who ends up with the most to really... To do, that you know, to the most to say and the most interesting as far as ones that and and she also had not had that much time before although she's great in catching fire as well we have Eldon Henson as an a box a tongueless slave from district 13 in this we learn more about his past and yeah just is it's they don't give him that much to do but Henson of course does amazing I'm I'm not even sure he knew sign language before doing this but he just it you feel like he's been you believe that this guy hasn't been able to speak for you know ages but yeah and you know we have prim of course she's really grown up there's been a lot I mean even in Catching Fire you could tell that she was very much you know I mean when when you see her in the first one I mean she looks like she might pass out when she's chosen at the reaping and it's not even no nobody you know no no one but the careers cheer when they're reaped but you know even as 12 year old 12 year old girls chosen to probably die and or having to kill upwards of 23 people go she was still really shell-shocked and yeah she's she's come a long way and yeah I, I 
she she does fairly well. She is she she carries that well. I yeah. And you know we have various soldiers from district and and officers from district 13. We have Lime, a district 2 victor from a while ago. You know, based, everyone does great acting. Everyone's so well cast. I mean, the with each of these, again, I, I, you know, I listen through the the audiobook, and then I check. You know, once I've once I've listened through the entire audiobook for the the movie as it's coming out, I check who is playing what role, and each time I'm like. That's perfect. That's perfect casting. And just every step of the way, just, yeah. Lime, the leagues, the, just, you know, Jackson, everybody looks and acts exactly the way I imagined it while listening through the audiobook. So just, yeah, fantastic work on that. And it's also, I mean, I knew that Box was, you know, he doesn't get to be awesome a lot in the first part. The first half of the book, he still does get to be really badass, but in part one, yeah, there, there wasn't as much room for that, but here it really comes across, and yeah. The... Like part one, this does have some characters that used to be major that are just used too little. Now, the... As far as villains go, there is some personality. There's, it's not quite one-dimensional, and you can, you can tell... I mean, it's, it's not necessarily the most subtle villain performances but yeah it's it's very compelling and yeah and we of course still have the themes of physical hardships loyalty in extreme conditions you know the Katniss having to deal with betrayal and violence in these extreme situations you know she has touched thousands of people but it's an entirely different thing to then lead these thousands of people into war and you know she yeah she has to figure out who she can trust and the this very much goes into poverty, starvation, oppression, and the effects of war, and the, the brutality, and how ethical, efficient tactics might be, you know, how far do you go, and, yeah, the, the, you know, and, and whether or not you can find hope in the middle of all this, just devastation and you know yeah with with any adaptation pretty much I'm gonna say you know check out the original this is very much I mean I think that if you let's say you watched Catching Fire without having watched The Hunger Games I think you could more or less follow what had happened and you know yeah more more or less there are, there are things that wouldn't have the same impact but you can more or less follow once we get into Makija you know part one and part two you gotta have watched the others before you yeah the the movie thankfully does not sit down and bring you up to speed it just it starts 
and then it's just going. And yeah, there's there's too much to do for it to really sit and hold your hand through the yeah. You're expected to remember where things were in the yeah. where the Hunger Games and Catching Fire were very much these gladiatorial battles, survival thrillers. Now we have very much this kind of war film, guerrilla war, urban warfare kind of story, taking a lot of cues from Vietnam, which I understand Karen McCormick actually, like her father, went to Vietnam and explained to her and her siblings yeah, about Vietnam, and yeah, it really shows in both the book and the film. And yeah, it's it's very much an anti-war story. And you know, Katniss does get a rifle, which is good because if you're in a futuristic city, not knowing the type or the amount of enemies you're gonna face and you have a bow and an arrow you know that doesn't make any sense I kid I kid I don't really get the Hawkeye hate I actually I was expecting him to be a more compelling same the world kind of type in Age of Ultron than you know Black Widow. If if they hadn't given Black Widow the the mini lightsaber dagger things, yeah. I mean she's she's interesting as a spy, as an infiltrator, and like you know not necessarily the kind of saving the world scope kind of stuff. But she's vital to the Avengers in the comics, so she's in the movie, and every Avenger in the movie gets to save the world. So yeah. The I've seen reviewers say that you know not the the fact that this was split in two that it wasn't just a three hour movie gives it room to breathe and allows for subtle character moments and the building of suspense during the siege of the capital and that that is quite true now it does very much start in an absolutely you know yeah, just at at the very least hopeful situation, and then go down from there. And it maintains a PG-13 rating. It's the most violent, as Francis Lawrence has said. It's still the, you know, where in the first one there was blood, but we didn't really see the violence. Here, yeah, since then, it's been bloodless but very violent and yeah it it works really well and it is you know it's it's scary it's threatening it's not really fun or cool you you can tell what's going on but it's still chaotic and disorienting and you don't so much you just hope that they'll make it out you know, you're not like checking out their moves and, you know, that kind of thing. And yeah, there are more mutts, more mutations in this. And it's still, you know, this kind of body horror stuff. And it's, it's really effective. Now, there is some of the CGI is. <sighs> It's pretty good, but you can tell that it's CGI, and the the action does tend to feel real. In these, if a character seems hard or, you know, difficult to get along with or something, it's probably because they lost someone close to them. In this, I think it was Liam, excuse me, Hemsworth, who said that 
you don't you feel like any of the characters could die excuse me at any moment and yeah that's excuse me that's very very true and it's it's very much that the I already mentioned the, you know the action it's more just scary and threatening than you know fun and cool you know when when you see when you see someone defeated it's not you know you're not you know you don't take any joy in that it's just there's relief in that okay that's one less enemy that I have to to deal with and don't get me wrong I I'm saying that's important for these I you know I love action movies where you've also you know I, I love them both but yeah you know James Cameron is one of my favorite action directors and the favorite directors period and in his action movies yeah you you do tend to get also that they're you know they they get to show off a little bit and be really cool and and such and yeah and I love him and his movies for it now given that it's YA there is of course some you know you're a super special snowflake kind of stuff going on although this one may be less so but yeah there are too many characters in this and really again it's it's when when you when you're trimming down from a book I think that the I'm trying to remember I think it's like 11 somewhere between 11 and 13 hours total for the book so even half you know we we have here a movie of two hours and eight minutes it's still yeah I think it was like five and a half hours that I found out that was maybe more so it's still cut down by half and more some of these characters really didn't need to be there or they didn't really and it's because in the book there's room to, there's you know you can have a lot of description of a single character and you can get a real sense of where they came from and such and in the movie it boils down to their you know they get a little bit of screen time maybe a few lines and that's it and yeah they should have been more they should have been more willing to cut it's it's something that hurts this one especially because even the new characters in part one still really had some very major moments that some really defining moments and in the first two a lot of these extra characters you know they're, they're very it's it's like they they are they're maybe from the capital and anything about this character is very much of the capital so when they're in the movie they're another yeah and you know one more aspect of the capital or more some of the capital comes you know becomes clear through those characters and the and then you have the, the the tributes and there again I can understand the the thinking that says you know the I think Jeremy from Simmons you know says that of of when when in the first movie when you see these short little bits about okay this character died this character died and he says you know the the fact that we're only being shown a few seconds of them now saying that they died shows just how unimportant these characters were I can see where you know where you're coming from and you know when you have this kind of concept with so many characters you know in this kind of competition you may expect to, to see more of them 
you know, and spend more time seeing them in the competition, I can completely understand. But I would still say there is still the fact that they're there and then you realize they, you know, they maybe died. Hypothetically, let's say that you cut it down to just, you know, just the, the characters that we are really terrified are going to kill the characters we like, and then the few characters that we do want to see make it out. Then what is happening when those two groups aren't fighting each other? You know, whenever in any time that these two groups are not fighting each other, they might be dealing with someone from, you know, yeah, someone else from during the game, and yeah, and, and it also just helps flesh out. And here, a lot of it just doesn't really, what what is left? What is left from the, you know, when, when it's trimmed down from the book, is just not really enough to really legitimize you know they they should just have combined more of these characters they, they do that a little bit in this there are a few characters from the book that are maybe combined with other characters and things like that and that's all you know that's often a good way to really cut down on book stuff and they yeah they just weren't quite willing enough to do that in this and yeah, the, there was some of that in the others, but in those, it was just more, you know, when, when you have, like, five different faces for, oh, this guy, you know, th this person is really enjoying, really going to enjoy killing other teenagers, and, you know, when, when you have five different ones, it's like, is Katniss really going to be able to, you know, to survive all of them? Where if you only had one, it would be, okay, so the two of them are going to fight, obviously, you know. But here, yeah, they just, they aren't, there isn't enough for them to do, and you're, you're left, you know, if I hadn't, you know, listened through the audiobook, I would probably have forgotten a number of the minor characters that are in this, and yeah, that kind of suggests that maybe they should have just been cut. Now, I think it was the Joe Blow Movie Network uh, reviewer that pointed out that PETA not quite having been cured yet, still being, you know, very unpredictable. And, you know, sometimes he is still really violent and such is one of the most interesting elements, and I would definitely agree. And Katniss now has to take on more of a role of a leader. The... A lot of the characters that... Yeah, you know, you, you don't get a good enough, like, final kind of, you know, final moments or a, a proper goodbye. And, you know, I would compare this to, like, Lord of the Rings. When the, the movie, the last time, you know, the, the end of the third movie, the last time the movie shows a certain character it's a proper farewell to that character. You want that kind of, you know, ending where you really feel like that, you know, that was really, that was a compelling journey that we took with this character. You know, I'm glad I took the journey. I'm glad I got to learn this character. Yeah, got to know this character. In this, they just, yeah, they, they just aren't as compelling and... I'd say at least some of them easily could have been.
I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.